My name is Sally and this podcast is about looking at reversing chronic health conditions, resetting thinking patterns and restoring my life by choosing different ways of living and thinking and being. And you can do this too. This is Reverse Reset Restore and change comes from within. Welcome to the show. We start this week's episode with a fable that most of us are likely familiar with, having heard it in some shape or form as a bedtime story or at school. These types of morality tales are designed to teach us something. This is perhaps one of the most famous fables of them all by the ancient Greek slave and storyteller Aesop. So settle back and take a listen while I recount my version of the story of the tortoise and the hare. A number of animals were enjoying a beautiful summer's day when hare hopped on by. As usual, hare began to brag to all the other animals about how quick he was. I'm faster than the river's current. Quicker than rain hitting the ground, he said. Blink and you'll miss me, he boasted before bounding off to the other side of the field and then back again in mere moments. See how fast I am, he proclaimed with barely a missed breath. Yes, replied some of the other animals. That was very fast, Hare. No one has ever beaten me, Hare kept bragging. And none of you ever will, he added before turning his attention to Tortoise, who had been slowly munching on a delicious green leaf. Especially not you, Tortoise. You're too cumbersome and far too slow. It's a miracle you can get anywhere at all. Tortoise just smiled. I get there sooner than you think, she replied. Hare laughed and then turning his back on Tortoise, he asked, Who wants to race me? None of the other animals spoke up. No one wanted to race Hare, if anyone was being honest. For one thing... Everyone felt Hare was always using his speed to show off, and from past experiences, he'd never shown himself to be much of a gracious winner. I'll race you, said Tortoise. You, Hare leapt about him smugly. That's hilarious. Let's race to Long Mountain, and we'll see who gets there first, said Tortoise. The other animals gasped. Long Mountain, exclaimed Mouse. That's at least a half a day away for you. It's too, too far, said Bluebird. You'll never make it, agreed Fox. Hare smirked. Let Tortoise try. I mean, I would have just been happy to race across the field, but I'm going to win either way. No one beats me. So Fox sent Mouse and Bluebird ahead to Long Mountain while Tortoise warmed up for the race. Hare bolted around the field a few times while he waited, stopping in front of Tortoise on every lap to thump his feet on the ground impatiently. He didn't want to wait around for Tortoise to limber up, an idea that he found impossible anyway for a Tortoise to do. Let's get on with it, said Hare. Are you ready, Tortoise? I'm ready, Hare, Tortoise replied as she slowly made her way towards the starting line that Fox had scratched into the grass with some sticks. On your marks, get set, and go, said Fox. I'll see you at the finish line, Tortoise, Hare said as he bounded away. Hare was almost over the hill when he looked back to see that Tortoise was still at the starting line. He couldn't help himself. He raced back to Tortoise, laughing as he pulled to a stop. You can start, Tortoise, you know, Hare smirked. Fox said go. I know, said Tortoise. I'm moving. Well, at this rate, I'll see you in a week, Hare laughed before bouncing away. In a flash, he darted over the hillside and was out of sight, leaving Tortoise plodding along at a tortoise pace. Hare, in the meantime had hopped and jumped his way over a number of hills and ravines, and it wasn't long before he'd put many miles between himself and Tortoise. Long Mountain was quite a distance, even for a speedy hare. 
especially on such a warm day. But confident that the race was already long won and with Long Mountain just beyond the bend, Hare decided to stop altogether. It'll be hours and hours before she even catches up, Hare thought to himself. I might as well find some shade and wait for Tortoise. Then she'll see just how ridiculous it was for her to try to race against me. Hare lay down under a shaded spot beside the course to wait, and before too long, he fell fast asleep. Tortoise, meanwhile, had kept a slow but steady pace, and after a time, came upon the place where Hare was sleeping. Tortoise saw Hare curled up under the tree, and considered whether she should wake him. But then she remembered how rude Hare had been towards her, how he was always rude to everyone when it came to his speed, and she decided that she'd just let him sleep. She was sure he'd wake up soon enough and probably beat her anyway as there was only about a half a mile left to reach the finish line. It was the drop in temperature which eventually woke Hare up. Disorientated for a moment, Hare then remembered that he'd been waiting for Tortoise to arrive so he could mock her before speeding ahead again to the finish line. He looked down the road from where he'd come and was surprised to not see Tortoise plodding along there. She really is slow, Hare thought. He decided that he might as well go ahead and win and wait for her at the finish line. Whenever that might be, he smirked. Hare was hopping along quite happily, thinking about all the jokes he would make at Tortoise's expense, when Bluebird fluttered towards him. Oh, there you are, said Bluebird. We wondered what had happened to you. I had a sleep while I was waiting for Tortoise to arrive, but she's still nowhere to be seen back there, Hare said. That's because she isn't back there, Bluebird said. She's almost at the finish line. She's going to win. Hare couldn't believe what Bluebird was saying and was about to tell her so when he rounded the final corner and saw Tortoise had almost reached the end. All of the other animals were there cheering her on as she inched closer to the finish line. No, he thought, and pushed himself as fast as he could go. I can still make it, he repeated over and over, his feet stinging from the impact of each thud on the hard soil beneath him. I'm making up ground, he thought to himself. But even with each step he gained, he knew It wasn't going to be enough. All he could do, no matter how much he was pushing himself, no matter how much ground he gained, was to watch in horror as Tortoise stepped over the finish line. He tumbled right over her, just a step behind. But it was too late. She had won the race. Everyone was screaming with excitement and congratulating Tortoise, who was smiling broadly. She only beat me because I fell asleep waiting for her, bemoaned Hare. It's not a real win. Well, if you wanted to win, you shouldn't have stopped, said Mouse matter-of-factly. Slow and steady over fast and furious, Fox said, as Hare began to bounce away in a huff of embarrassment and annoyance. Tortoise called Hare to come back. He did so, with some reluctance. (sighs) Go ahead, he said, avoiding eye contact. Go ahead and tease me for being so foolish and for losing the race. Tortoise nudged him gently with her shell. We both got here in the end. There are a few different interpretations of the moral of the story. The first and most famous one is that slow and steady wins the race. It was because the tortoise took the time, going at the pace that was right for them as a tortoise, that she was able to complete the race and in fact win it. Now obviously we know that had the hare not stopped and taken that nap, he would have been the winner. He had the natural speed and ability to win. The tortoise and everyone else knew that the hare's innate abilities meant he had a greater chance to win the race. 
But the tortoise wasn't focusing on what she lacked. She didn't get despondent as Hare took off and was seemingly well on his way to the win, but rather she did what she was able to do, putting one foot in front of the other, moving forward in perfect step with her capabilities. The second moral, perhaps Aesop wanted us to consider, was not just that slow and steady wins, but that impatience creates a loss for us. The secondary moral really focuses on the hubris of the hare and how in his arrogance and subsequent carelessness, he forfeits what could have been an easy win because he had a sense of entitlement to it and quickly, or perhaps slowly, learned he let his ego get in the way. So why the heck did I share this kid's story with you today? Well, firstly, because I want to remind you that it's okay to be the tortoise in a world that wants you to be the hare. And secondly, to point out that when trying to be a hare, to do everything at top speed or judge ourselves and those around us for how quickly we can achieve something really robs us of our peace. We live in a society where meeting our wants and needs immediately has almost been ingrained in us. We have this expectation for instant gratification. Amazon packages on same-day delivery, Uber Eats in 20 minutes, binge-watching every episode ever made of a TV show in as few hours as possible. And we apply that to all areas in our lives. How fast can we fall in love, get married, have the babies, get that promotion, lose the weight, buy the house, go on vacation, recover from an illness, get those likes? We are so addicted to our instant gratification that we get impatient for the reward. We get impatient for the healing. We want to see the results now. And then we get discouraged or distracted when things aren't happening as quick as we want or hope or demand of ourselves. I think this great quote by Dr. Anita Sands says so much about the burden we put upon ourselves when we have these unrealistic expectations in our journey. Don't walk 10 miles into the forest and expect to get out in five. This is an invaluable observation and it's one I think about a lot in the context of my body and its current state. We forget. We forget that what has taken years to get our bodies in this condition is not going to fade away magically overnight. No matter the lies the diet industry would have us believe, My inbox gets flooded with cleverly crafted bogus ads promising flat stomachs in less than a month, no exercise required, and they have the before and after pictures to prove it. Or take this pill three times a day and drop 10 pounds in four days. Or they use words like miracle, magic, and doctor recommended to hoodwink you, knowing your desperation to be thinner, healthier or to fit the perceived beauty standards of the day will drive you to try these things and part with your money. I mostly eat keto and it's amazing how many companies have jumped on the keto bandwagon plying their wares under the guise of being a keto product and so few actually really truly are. They use buzzwords to entice you to make you consume And we do. We consume all day long in this ever-needing desire to remove ourselves from who we currently are. And even though these products fail us time and time again, we still try. Desperate to shorten the miles back to the starting point where we think it all went wrong. And when our expectations aren't met when we think they should have been, we open ourselves up to falling into the trap of the hair. The hare wanted to prove his worth by how quickly he could make things happen. But he was arrogant and impatient. And in the end, it cost him the win. He was forced to see that there is something of worth in the consistency of the slow and steady. That true quick fixes are very few and far between. We've walked 10 miles into the forest of our circumstances. Perhaps our bodies bear witness to that old way of walking. Perhaps our distorted thinking cleared somewhere along those miles. And now we've come to a crossroads where we can see what changes we can make to be different. 
but we've somehow burdened ourselves with this expectation that it should only take us five miles to get out again. We are so impatient, frantic for the promise of what we think we need to be fulfilled that we begin to doubt if we don't see immediate results. And that is where, if we are not vigilant, we subject ourselves to the hair mentality of trying to race through our healing journey and forgetting that it's okay to take it slow and steady like the tortoise. Change takes time. Have patience. Practice kindness. You wouldn't expect a newborn baby to start eating solids or get up and walk. No, we understand that development takes time. That's what you're doing when you choose to change. You are also making a choice to give yourself grace and patience in the process. For me, the true moral of the story is that your victory is assured with every moment you lay claim to your true value. It's the reason why the tortoise won. Not because she reached the finish line first or because she was slow and methodical. No. It was because even as she took that first step, she was stepping out assured of her own abilities and talents and she never wavered, never compared herself to the hare or anyone else. She didn't put limits on who she was or what she could do. She knew that she'd get to right where she needed to be no matter how long it might take. How much happier might we be if we had that same focus on recognising the value in our own journey and just taking it one step at a time. Thank you so much for indulging me in this fable today. I'd love to hear if this story has given you a personal insight or another moral that resonates with you. Feel free to join me on my Insta page, Reverse Reset Restore, or the Facebook page, also Reverse Reset Restore, to keep the conversation going. And if you want to keep hearing more, please hit subscribe. I want to encourage you today to again consider Dr. Sand's words. Think about the areas in your life where you may be trying to force a quick fix solution after years of inflicting pain and suffering on yourself. If you've had a poor relationship with your thinking, your feelings, or your body, it's not going to magically be resolved in one moment. It is the slow and steady work of repairing your relationship with yourself that will help you find your way out of the forest of your discontent. This stuff takes time and you're worth it. Don't walk 10 miles into the forest and expect to get out in five.